ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, that makes life seem worthwhile. Well, in your eyes, and the smell of your smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream Teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, John Brown, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing, Who Put That Dream in Your Eye? Who put that dream in your eye? And who put that song in your side? Who makes you thrill through and through? Who is that lucky guy I wish I knew? Please tell me who put that spring in your walk And who put that lilt in your talk Your kiss could put me wise and make me realize That I put that dream in your eyes Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases... Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. secret that with the cost of living what it is these days, many of us are beginning to feel the pinch. But on the salary our young hero makes at Willoughby's store, he's almost completely black and blue. It's no wonder then that for months he's been looking for a job in his spare time in addition to the one he already holds. The wonder is that he seems finally to have found something. And flushed with excitement, he's just telling his girlfriend Mildred all about it, only to have his joy cooled perceptibly at her none too enthusiastic reception of the news. Well, gee whiz, Mildred, is that all you're going to say? I thought you'd be thrilled. Well, maybe I should be, Dennis, but you see, you know so little about radio. But there's big and... money in radio, Mildred. You take a fellow like Jack Benny. I'll bet he makes upwards of $100 a week. Well, yes, of course he does. And that's for himself after he pays all his employees. I mean, like that girl Mary and the fat fella and Rochester and that very funny boy singer. <laughs> Benny's an actor, Dennis, a star. And you're just going to sell time for a local radio station. Sure, and I'll make a fortune, because every merchant in Weaverville would jump at the chance to sponsor a brand new idea for a radio program. And that's just what I've got. Oh, you really have? On just a regular serial, like Today's Children or Active, you know. About a department store detective? No, I don't. Sure you do. It's called David something or other, Counter Spy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Well, then I got a better idea. Put on a serial, Sure. But face it on someone who lives right here in Weaverville. And the first person I thought of was you. 
Me? Sure. I even had the title. Just plain old Mildred Anderson, girl female. <laughs> oh, Janet. And then I realized I'd have to bring in this home, the relationship between your mother and father, so I threw it out. Why? <laughs> Why? And then I thought of my boss. What about a serial, I asked myself, called Mr. Willoughby Faces Life? Well, that doesn't sound too bad. No, I decided it wouldn't work. Life would get all the sympathy. <laughs> oh, I see. And then, like a ton of bricks, it hit me. Why just one weavable character? Why not a serial based on everyone in town? You, me, Mr. Willoughby, Mr. Courtney, the banker, that old gossip, Mrs. Dolan, the butcher, the baker, everyone. Oh, golly. What an idea. I couldn't believe I had thought of it. I went right over to the mirror and kissed myself. <laughs> Mm, isn't it wonderful, Mildred? Well, yes, yes, I guess it is. Why, girl, what is it? Have you no confidence in me? Oh, yes, of course I have. Deep down inside. Then let's dredge a little, shall we? <laughs> yes, it's just that... Well, you're going to have to sell this thing to put it across, and every time you've tried to sell anything in the past... Oh, you're looking at a new man, girl. I just... If there is, don't be a chump. Be a chum by Arthur Armquist. Oh? You're sure this Arthur Armquist really knows something about salesmanship? I'll say. He sold me the book. <laughs> well, uh, what does he say about selling? Well, he says that the whole secret is in friendliness. A salesman's got to make other people as equal. Oh, I guess you can do that. Sure, but it'll be quite a come down for most of my customers. <laughs> oh, nonsense. Well, anyway, the idea is to be a hail fellow well met. Call the prospect Kiddo or Buster or Sonny Boy or Junior or some name like that. He says it works every time. And you think he's right? Sure. This fellow knows what he's doing. Oh, wait a minute. I hear your mother coming downstairs. Watch. I bet I even get a friendly smile from her. Oh, well, that's the test, all right. I hope... Oh, good morning, Mother. Good morning, Mildred. Uh, Dennis. What do you say, Buster? Buster? <laughs> oh, pardon me. Wrong sex. <laughs> what I meant was... How's it, kiddo? Oh! Dennis, be careful. Oh, just a friendly pat on the back, that's all. My pal and I understand each other, don't we, kiddo? If I thought we did, I'd be on my way to a psychiatrist this minute. Why, chum, that's no don't way Don't to... you chum me, Dennis Day. And if you ever lay a hand on me again, I'll... I'll... And I'll bet they acquit me. <laughs> Gee, that didn't work out as well as I expected. Are you going to give it up? Well, it's merchants, and i got to get my foot in the door with that radio. I just hope now that I don't come home with my whole leg in a cast. And so off our hero goes to the store, hoping to take the town by storm with his new radio program. But a storm is already brewing down at Willoughby's, a storm of an entirely different nature. We find Dennis's boss engaged in a most serious discussion with Herbert Anderson. But good heavens, Herb, don't you realize what could happen if, if those minutes of our lodge meetings got into the wrong hands? Yes, of course I do, Homer. <laughs> I've looked everywhere. I, I just can't find them. Well, you've got to find them. If it ever gets out that we've had entertainers like that, that Flossie, uh, what was her name? Flossie LaFleur, the flame of Amour. <laughs> yeah. When she poses, no one dozes. <laughs> Fine stuff for our wives to read. I tell you, if those large minutes aren't recovered, there isn't a bald eagle who will ever fly again. But it was only harmless fun. You think our wives will believe that? All they have to know is that we had Flossie LaFleur and her 12 little pepper pots entertaining. Six little pepper pots, Homer. Oh, really? I thought there were 12. I know. That was the night you were the wine steward. <laughs> Herbert, you didn't... That book doesn't tell about the imitation Flossie did of Al Jolson, does it? I'm afraid it does. Five whole lurid pages of it. Oh, no. I even wrote how she sang, Climb Upon My Knees, Sonny Boy, and you did your best to. <laughs> oh, Herbert. Well, I wasn't the only one. The entire lodge wanted to be Sonny Boy. I know. Yeah, what about you? When she sang, How I Love You, How I Love You, did, did, didn't you put a glass of water on your head and claim you were the dear old Swanee? Yes, I was full of the old Ned that night. Oh, we, we'd better find that book, Homer. I'm going home and have another look. Yes, you do that. And if you don't find it, I'll have the Lodge Hospital Fund standing by for disbursements. Good morning. Oh, hi, Mr. Anderson. 
What are you doing down here? Well, uh, j- just a little business with your boss, Dennis. Uh, I'll see you later, Homer. Mm. Well, Dennis... What do you know? Will it be old pal, old chum, old sock? How's my old pally pal? Dennis, I don't feel so well today. I, I just, oh, don't worry. I'll cheer you up. Have I got a proposition for you, sonny boy? <laughs> What was that? I say, if I got a problem... No, no, I mean, what was it that you called me? Sonny boy. I see. You got that out of a book, huh? A certain book. As a matter of fact, I did. Yeah. Sit down, Dennis. Oh, sure. (laughs) Gee, thanks, pal. Okay, what's the proposition? Well, I got a great idea for a radio program, kiddo. Oh, Mammy, is this an idea? Please, don't... It's a brand new type of show, all about the lives of certain people right here in Weaverville. Can you imagine the effect of a broadcast like that coming right into your own home? <laughs> Easily. Then, wh- then why not be one of my sponsors? It'll only cost you fifty dollars, old pal, old chum. Here's the fifty. But just let me point out the advantage. Of... Beg pardon? I said here's your fifty dollars. Bless you, PS Nine, for teaching me how to read. <laughs> I, on the other hand, detest PS9. Huh? However, consider me signed, sealed, and delivered. Oh, great. Now, let's see. There ought to be some other good prospect in town for a thing like this, don't you think? Just walk up to anyone on the street who's wearing pants. (laughs) Yeah? Well, how about Mr. Courtney, the banker? Of course, the bank has never advertised before. It will now. Gee, you've got as much faith in my salesmanship as I have. Well, so long. Keep your chin up, sonny boy. <laughs> ah, here he is now. Hiya, Courtney, old kid, old pal. Hey, aren't you Willoughby's boy? Yep, just telling your secretary here I wanted to see you, Pally. I have no time now. I'm on my way to lunch. Respect. Goodbye. Well, you'll be sorry if you don't listen to what I have to say, Sonny Boy. What was that? <laughs> Gosh, what a broad jump. Never mind. Did, did, did you just call me Sonny Boy? Yes, yeah, a little thing I read in a book. Let's step into my office where we can talk in private. <laughs> Gee, every boy should be given a copy of that thing when he graduates from college. (laughs) All right, Dave. What have you got in mind? Well, I've got an idea for a radio broadcast, pal, and it's a beauty. I see. Let me show you the advantages of sponsoring it. Don't bother. I think I can see them all. You mean I've talked you into it already? Naturally. Boy, am I a persuasive little cut. (laughs) Here's $50 in cash. Will that be satisfactory? Sure thing. This just shows what can be done when you've got a good product. If I had a product like yours, I'd close the bank and retire. <laughs> well, I always knew I'd make a good salesman. So long, and thanks, Sonny Boy. <laughs> boy, oh boy, Mildred, I'm telling you, you never saw anything like it. What a book that is. Oh, Dennis, it's just too marvelous. You actually collected a hundred dollars in cash? In lettuce. Nice, cool, green root of evil. Oh. <laughs> oh, golly, just by being friendly. Yep, just by doing what the book says, palling and kiddoing people. Although I must admit that Sonny Boy has been by far my best seller. <laughs> oh, Dennis, now you can put on your radio program. Sure. I've already gone down to the radio station and bought the time with their money. Oh, golly, it's just... Uh, Dennis, look. There's Mr. Courtney and Mr. Willoughby at the door. Well, well, my business associates. Hey, maybe you better wait in the den, Mildred. We're big men, and this may be a pretty big deal. All right, Dennis. Good luck. Well, come in, gentlemen. Come right in. We want to talk to you, Dave. Right this minute. Well, sure, but why so serious, pals? Chums? Kiddos? Honey boys? (laughs) 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 Ah, the old icebreaker. Sit down, Busters. Day, I'll come right to the point. We've come over to make a deal with you. Yeah, how about $200 in cash? You mean you want to give me more money without my even asking for it? Exactly. 
Boy, what a salesman I am. Even when I'm not selling, there's a carryover. <laughs> we want that book, eh? Book? You don't mean the one I got that Sunny Boy stuff out of? You know that's what we mean. Oh, I couldn't part with that. It's my stepping stone to success. So, playing it cagey, huh? huh? Well, we'll see about that. Easy, Are you? Easy. <laughs> All right. What is it you want, boy? A good raisin salary. Homer will give it to you, won't you, Homer? Certainly. Does that satisfy you? Well, maybe you'd like a change in jobs. There's one waiting for you in my bank. How about it? Well... Or perhaps you'd be interested in public office. The bald eagles will get behind you for city council. Well... Or mayor. How would you like to be mayor? <laughs> come, come, boy. Why don't you speak up? You think I'm crazy? I'm doing great with well. <laughs> Dennis, you can see that we're desperate. Now, do we get that book? Oh, gee, I guess you do. I couldn't do it. Well, my gracious, what in the world's going on here? Herb, our troubles are over. We've got the book. Well, of course. Didn't you get my message? I found it. Huh? What? Sure. It had slid down back of the seat cushion in the car. Now, about the city council job... Drop dead. <laughs> Why, chums, sunny boys, buddies. Quiet, you. My goodness, has our buddy ship cooled? I'll say it has. And I'll thank you for that $50 I gave you. Yeah, mine too. But kiddos, I already gave the whole $100 to the radio station. Then get it back. But I can't. Radio stations have very high principles, and not giving money back is one of their highest. <laughs> Dennis, we want that money. I think I'd better get out of here. Day, neither we get that money, you'll spend the rest of your life in jail. Gentlemen, please, you're biting the hand that's raised to leave the room. I think you understand us, Dennis Come on, fellas, let's get that book right now and burn it I'll say Come on, Herb. Hey, but palsies Gee, what a life to live Sometimes I wish I'd never gotten over the measles Oh, Dennis, I heard it all I just... Stay away from me, girl I'm jailbait <laughs> But you aren't All you did was agree to put on a radio show if you do that, they can't do anything to you. But all that's paid for is the time. How can I put on a radio sh program without actors? Actors want money. They eat just like people. <laughs> well, you and I could be the actors, Dennis. Huh? Well, what kind of a show has only two actors? Did you ever hear one of those breakfast programs? You know, where the husband and wife chat over the breakfast table? Oh, yeah, with their mouths full. <laughs> but that kind of show would have to come from this house, and what would your mother say? Mother and Daddy will still be asleep at that hour. They don't have to know anything about it. Gee, Mildred, I don't Dennis, know. Dennis, it's our only chance. Besides, maybe we'll be a big success. We can even mention some products on the program in hopes of attracting sponsors. Gosh, it might work at that. Of course it might, and it's simple. We just act like any married couple at breakfast. Yeah. I hope the rustling of the morning paper and the grunts come over clearly. <laughs> Now, don't get nervous, Dennis. We go on the air as soon as the light flashes. You better clear your throat. Gee, I don't think I can. My heart's in it. <laughs> I thought, sure, those engineers would wake your mother up with that hamming, hammering when they put in those cables. Gee, Miller, besides, we don't even know what we're going to say. We haven't rehearsed yet. Well, just let me lead the conversation. All you have to do is help make the audience think we're actually at the breakfast table. Okay, I'll chew like anything. <laughs> oh, no, just ask me to pass things. No, the way you really do with my mother every morning. You mean I should beg you for an egg? <laughs> Dennis, use your imagination and make them think we're eating a wonderful breakfast. Uh -huh. Wait. Oh, my gosh, there's the light. Go ahead. <clears throat> Good morning, friends. This is just plain charming Dennis and Mildred coming to you from their lovely breakfast table, which is the same as their lovely lunch table, only sooner. <laughs> Good morning, Mildred, darling. Sleep well? Oh, I always sleep well on our dream time mattress, dear. And you? I tossed and turned all night. Couldn't sleep a wink. <laughs> oh, no, Dennis. No one ever gets a poor night's nice rest on a dream time mattress. The dream time mattress is built with a special inner spring. Maybe that's what kept sticking in my back. <laughs> Dennis, the product, don't you remember? Oh, 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 yeah. A cigarette, dear? Uh, thank you, ma'am. 
At Margaret, I say, at Margaret after Margaret, I've seen the buyers of this brand. <laughs> this mildest brand, and every one of them is a man or a woman. Dennis, I, I think maybe we'd better eat our breakfast, dear. But certainly, darling. Uh, would you mind passing the wild pheasant, please? <laughs> Why, uh, yes, and here are some delicious scrambled eggs. Oh, no, thanks. Just a little pheasant and a few frog's legs will do me fine. Uh, well, just as you say, uh, did you stop in and see Francis and Jean on the way downstairs this morning? Why, uh, no. Are they visiting us again? <laughs> They're our children, darling. <laughs> oh, then they're here permanently, no doubt. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm glad, because Francis and Jean certainly are cute little boys. Yes. Good. <laughs> Jean to the dentist yesterday, you know. Oh? Uh, something to do with his teeth? <laughs> yes. Good for you. There's nobody I'd rather have fix my teeth than a dentist. <laughs> but where was Francis while you were out with Jean? Well, he was with my parents. Ah, yes, the dear, sweet old thing. Your mother is just grand, Mill. Oh, and she certainly thinks the world of you. Yes, she worships the ground I walk on. I often think that... What silly imbecile was doing the hammering just now? You, Dennis Day? <laughs> well, well, if it... Isn't that delightful old be- uh, lady, Mildred's mother? What's that? Uh, sit down. Uh, sit right down, Mommy, and shush. <laughs> shush? I'll shush you. Who do you think you're talking to? Oh, Mother, please. Yes, Mommy, dear. If we ever needed a shush, it's now. <laughs> Dennis Day. Shush, you might wake Francis. Francis? <laughs> Who's Francis? Oh, I, uh, I forgot. It's a family secret. <laughs> Just who is this, Francis? Well, he's, uh, he's your grandson. My grandson? Yeah, we've been keeping little things from you, Mommy. I have no grandson, and you know it. Uh, and if I find out which one of you just kicked me under the table, I'll beat the life out of Dennis. <laughs> Mother, please have a cup of coffee, won't you? Yeah, and a nice slice of pheasant. Help yourself, Mommy. Are you crazy? There's nothing on this table except... Wait a minute. What is this thing with the wires attached? What? Why, it's a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See now, why, shush. Do you mean that everything we've said has gone out over the air? Oh, don't worry. I'm sure we were faded long ago. <laughs> Dennis, tell you... You... Goodbye, everybody. You... We're a little late this morning. Goodbye. With Charles Dant and the orchestra, here's Dennis to sing the beautiful ballad, How Lucky You Are. Oh, 
Day is brought to you every Wednesday by the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, hair that gleams and glistens from a luster cream shampoo. Yes, luster cream shampoo leaves hair with new three-way loveliness, one fragrantly clean. Two, glistening with sheen. Three, soft, easy to manage. Luster cream is not a soap, not a liquid, but an utterly new, rich lathering cream shampoo. A blend of secret ingredients plus lanolin. Try luster cream shampoo. Four ounce jar, only one dollar. At all cosmetic counters. Also in smaller sizes. Be a dream girl. A lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl. Beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. This is Vern Smith reminding you to join us again next week for another Dennis Day show brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. Ladies and gentlemen, if infantile paralysis should strike your child, it would take more than luck to save him from the life of a cripple. Only the best medical care can help your youngster. Your contribution to the March of Dimes enables the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis to guarantee all the medical treatment possible to help restore polio victims to healthy, active lives. That's why it's important to give generously to the March of Dimes. That's why it's important to give now. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.